Hi, I'm Phyllis Boger, and um, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about my piece here. It is a painting on silk, and uh, I've been painting on silk for probably 20, 25 years. I paint in a lot of different media, but right now silk is my favorite. Let's say I was asked how I got started in art, and I've been probably painting since I was six or seven years old. And the biggest inspiration came from the fact that I was always that artist, that young child that was asked to paint the pilgrims. Not paint, I guess we drew them with chalk on blackboards back then. So I was always the one that did the pilgrims on the Mayflower or Santa Claus or the Maypole. And I finally figured it out when I got to be much older. The reason they had me do that, I was such a disruptive child that they thought that was the best way to keep me occupied. So, my, in some ways, my art was encouraged by these teachers who were trying to keep me focused on something else and actually appreciate them for that. Um, and encourage people to, if they see a child with some artistic ability, to give them a job to do that's artistic. My name is Laurel Susie, and I'm a painter. And um, I moved to Memphis about five years ago. So I've been living and working in here, um, in here literally, this is my studio, and um, I also teach painting over at uh, Rhodes College, which was part of the reason that um, my husband and I moved here. But I'm happy to be in Memphis, I've been loving it, and it's brought a lot of new things to my work. I make abstract, uh, abstract oil paintings, uh, primarily based on real light and real um, landscape situations. Uh, both imagined in my head and experienced in my life. So the move to Memphis has impacted my work. I'm not exactly sure I can t articulate how, but it is in there. I can see it in the work. Um, I, I'm going to take a stab at it and say that it's changed the colors. It's changed, obviously, the colors affect um, how the light reads in the painting. Um, often when I make a shift in my work, it, um, I might be the last person to know exactly what it is. It's a very intuitive process for me. So um, uh, it'll take a couple years to sort of um, show itself and unfold. So five years is just about right for me to be able to see that. Um, the piece that I have in the Dixon show is called Sweet Jane. And um, I feel like it's very much influenced by my time in Memphis. It has a palette combined with a more natural palette. So a sort of flux of maybe two worlds at the same time. Um, and um, there's generally in my work a sense of, I would hope, a sense of cohesion, but the attempt that I'm going at is um, bringing many different parts together and trying to find some sort of balance there. And sometimes there's that balance, sometimes that balance is not there. Um, but that's, that's what I'm, I'm aiming at um, when I look at, them, look at my work across uh, a long stretch of time. That's why I, I find that um, they have in common is that strive for strive for cohesion, strive for a, a sense of whole with a bunch of different players um, interacting. And um, generally, I um, have always been a very visual person, but I did not know I was a painter until I was well into it. It really wasn't until I finished my degree and I looked around and realized I had put so much energy into it um, that this was really what I was doing. And I'm so lucky for that. I feel really, really privileged to have found my passion and to um, be following it. Um, what a treat to get to be in here every day and to sort out my thoughts and to see the results of um, my energy on the canvas. It really is, really is everything I, I, um, I live for in here and it's, it's, um, it's exciting to have the opportunity to do that. Mainly, if I were to um, guide a viewer through the process of looking at my work, at least from my perspective, um, I have a romance with color. So um, I'm mixing and I'm negotiating different color relationships in different parts of the painting as I move around. And like I said before, eventually trying to find some sort of harmony with the, with the whole but um, really just moving part to part and um, giving each moment its consideration and um, fine-tuning it, just like music, like tipping a, a color just a little bit in one direction, a little bit in another, to make a certain 
um, resonance between a relationship that I find. So that's how I'm, I engage them. And, um, and um, it comes out of, a, I think, a deep uh, reverence for the history of painting and, um, and, you know, my experience having painted outside for a long time, which is how I uh, primarily, learned, primarily learned how to paint which uh, was from observation out in the landscape. So mixing all those natural colors, looking at the natural light, and, um, and all that has come together now into an inter um, interior studio practice where I work inside, um, mix the colors mostly from my memory, but they always, uh, for me, resonate with a real life uh, uh, light experience. Hi, my name's Ian Lamans. Uh, I'm an artist. Um, I think in some ways I've always been an artist, but it's kind of like being a gardener. Like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if a gardener is always a gardener because they're not always gardening. But yet, you know what I mean. So, um, I think it's like anybody who's a, who's an artist um, is only an artist sometimes. I went through most of my life picking up and putting down art in some way, but I'd always been around creative people. And, uh, you know, like most creative people, you work for a while and then, you know, you can get burnout or whatever. And uh, it wasn't until uh, a friend of mine, when I started playing with a camera, a friend of mine moved to Memphis and he was a, he was a photographer. And uh, so he let me borrow like this little 35 millimeter camera and uh, I started playing around with it. And I was like really bad at it for, for three or four years, which is probably the amount of time that somebody would be bad at anything before they become good at it. So, um, like one of the lessons I learned about art and everything else is that if you're going to be good at something, you have to be brave enough to suck at it for a long time. So, like if you're going to be a good drummer, then you have to be ter terrible at it for, for a while and you have to annoy people with your bad drumming. And then eventually you, you get good at something and that's, that's if you're lucky. So, um, you know, I think that that's kind of like one of the one of the weird things about being alive is that you have to be terrible at something and you have to be brave enough to be terrible at something. Um, so I started playing with the camera and I thought it was a good way to um, express things non-verbally. Like uh, there are these people that are called raconteurs and their job is to tell a story really well. And uh, so I, I, I don't want to be a raconteur, I don't want to tell a story, but I do want to present certain things or certain ideas in ways that I think are compelling um, since most of what I do is manipulating context of objects or things or whatever to sort of distill out an idea. Um, like for instance, you know, sometimes I'll read about some some idea and uh, or read about something. Like recently I was reading about um, um, the, the, the Mormon, you know, the, the trail that the Mormons used. What was it called? The... Um, the Mormon Trail, that's what, it, that's what it is, right? And uh, how arduous it was to get to, from one place to another, and that, you know, like, they, there was a lot of infant mortality, and so, like, uh, I wanted to do some photographs about infant mortality, but I can't really, you know, ph photography is a very literal medium, and I can't, you know, you know, obviously I'm not gonna, you know, I can't literally go take pictures of that, so what I have to do is, kind of um, present this idea to a viewer in a way that is, you know, manipulating the context of objects. And I, I know that doesn't make a ton of sense, but, uh, but it, it works. And um, so I, I just think photography and art in general is a great way of non-verbally communicating something that can be, you know, a deep idea or a troublesome idea or a happy idea or anything like that.